Uh, I don't think NVIDIA expected me to super sample this. Oh well. Following a big debacle yesterday night, NVIDIA has unveiled and will release the GTX 1080 Ti. Look at this. World's fastest GPU. Note that this is 35% higher performing than the GTX 1080 and slightly faster than the Titan X Pascal version. As you can see here, lots of hubbub about it, the Founders Edition, etc. More information on it, drivers. And now let's get into the specs about it, the specs of it. Released is March 5th, of course, so next week as as the time of recording this video. And then look at these delicious spec specs. 3,584 CUDA cores, as opposed to 3,584 CUDA cores of the Pascal Titan. Same amount of texture units, slightly less ROPs. They haven't released the core clock yet, but the boost clock is 1528. And note that GPU boost 3 means it'll clock itself to whatever it feels like. It'll go past this usually, as long as you have ad adequate cooling. I mean, if you jam this into a toaster and turn it on, you probably won't get these clocks, but regardless, 11.3 teraflops compute, which is slightly higher than the Titan Pascal's teraflops, which is really impressive, I might add. 11 gigabytes of G G5X. Now, this is pretty bizarre. 11 gigabytes per second. So, granted, it's faster than the other ones, but you'll see what I'm po poking at in a second. The memory bus is slightly smaller. But the VRAM is 11 gigs, as opposed to 12. Now, I'm sure you're not going to watch this and say, I want my 12 gigs of VRAM, we buy Titan X now. I don't think that's going to be the case, but they're trying to make some selling point for the, tas the, the, Tascal, the Titan Pascal. And granted, Jensen Wong was talking about how games are about to use 11 gigs of VRAM, for example, Watch Dogs 2 and Deus Ex or something at 5K. And then you go down here, floating point 64 precision, 130 second, floating point 16 native precision is 164th, INT8, 4 to 1, so, for the same specs. The, the thermal design power is 250 watts for both cards. And it's based off the same GPU core, so GP102 architecture. Well, GP102 core, I should say. The transistor count is 12 billion, 12 billion, and then 7.2 billion, and 8 billion. The die size is the same. And then the manufacturing process is still 16 nanometer TSMC. Launch date is well, March 2017. And anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. This, this is the creme de la creme. Seven hundred dollars for Titan X performance, or slightly better Titan X performance, I should say. It's probably one percent better. Now, I know this seems like a very tempting deal to get the TI card because the TI is always going to be the baby Titan, and it performs just as well, if not slightly better. Well, now because going from the 1080 to 1080 Ti is thirty-five percent, going from the 980 to 980 Ti was about 25%, I believe, and then going from the 780 to 780 Ti was 15 to 18% improvement. So the, the Ti cards are doing better overall, and NVIDIA is pushing its whole, the Titan is for the hardcore enthusiast and the video professional, whereas the GeForce cards, not the Titan cards, the GeForce cards are for the general gamer, consumer, etc., because... I don't know about you, but I'm never going to spend $1.2,000 on the graphics card. That's as much as my computer was worth. And then look at this. Picture of the die, etc. VRM placement. And no, I'm still waiting for Volta. Volta is the next gen um, NVIDIA card generation. So, Maxwell Pascal Volta. And then there is going to be, in the, the AMD boat, is going to be uh, Vega, and then after Vega, I believe is Navi. We go down here, and this extra hub up, and note that they, they removed the DVI. So you can see here, DisplayPort 
display port, display port, HDMI. In the box, you also get a display port to, to DVI connector. So if you're using a DVI connector, which I am, then you can hook it up to that little adapter doofer and you can run it. There's the packaging, and then there's a photo gallery of extra 1080 Ti goodness. Note that, note that the uh, links will be in the description as always. Let's go over here. GTX 1080 Ti for 700 next week, air quotes. Some more information about it, confirming it. And overall, it seems like a very interesting release. It comes out a week after the announcement, and a lot of people were expecting AMD Vega to be revealed because AMD had a Vega event and Nvidia had its Pascal Gamers event thing going on on the 28th of February which is yesterday March 1st as of this recording and then there's this but they didn't really re reveal very much. Roger Kador kind of controlled the audience because in summary the most information we got was it's going to be called the RX Vega so RX for it 470, RX 480, RX Vega, and that was pretty much it. Note that there's, if you watch the whole Cap Station and Cream 2070 event, GDC, you can hear Raja Kadori talking about advances, but generally, we don't have the specs yet. We know that it'll have HBM Variant 2, or Generation 2. We know that it's AMD's, uh, way of hitting over at the 1080's performance range, but because NVIDIA decreased the price of the GTX 1080 to $500 to $499 MSRP, with the Titan, with the, Titan the 1080 Ti, at the 1080's previous MSRP, AMD will either take a loss selling this at their expected price, or lower it below the Ti, which they're pretty much going to have to do to actually sell the darn thing, because the Ti seems so appealing. And overall, it's just very interesting, yet AMD may take a big hit unless their pricing is competitive. And knowing AMD, I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite competitive. But the problem with that is if you lower the price to make it harder on your competition, you're making less money per card. And these guys work in the hardware business, not software business. You can't recoup your finances in a game sale. It's not your market. You recoup your finances by selling a chip and making money off of it. If you decrease the price of the chip to be more competitive than your competitor's product, there's a good chance that you're making less money off the chip. That's how the economics works. And if the competitor up ones you and decreases their price, and let's say if it's NVIDIA, which is quite a bit larger than AMD, a NVIDIA can take the hit, AMD probably can't. So let's say the Vega is priced below the, let's say it's priced at 550. NVIDIA could just swoop down and decrease the GTX 1080's price to, I don't know, 450 and they'll put heavier pressure on Vega. So the AMD will either make the choice of, do we decrease Vega's price and take a big hit, or do we leave it as is and hemorrhage sales? And Anyway, because of NVIDIA's market share and marketing, NVIDIA can afford doing that. It's kind of scummy, but that's how business works. And then there's more information about companies such as Bethesda Softworks partnering with AMD to optimize games for the Ryzen CPU lineup and the Vega GPU, or GPU lineup, because at this point I don't know if it's going to be a whole new lineup or just a graphics card itself. I'm assuming it's a graphics card. And it's for broader implementation for the CPUs, GPUs, Vulkan, etc., Better optimization, and then there's a little cap station and cream at GDC 2017 event. I don't really recommend watching it unless you want to hear lots of hubbub. In summary, it's just going to be called Ry the, the Ryzen Vega. It's going to be called the RX Vega. You go over here. I don't watch that. And we rise new benchmark leaks, records, Intel price drops, and what to expect on launch day. If you haven't heard, Intel's been dropping the prices of their um, 7th, 6th, and 5th generation CPUs. And if you go down here, in retaliation to Ryzen, go in here and look at these benchmarks. So we have the 1700X versus the 6800K. So hexacore, octacore, roughly the same price. 
and then it's showing these benchmarks. And so they're having a, we don't really know what the GPU they're using. I assume it's probably a 1080. And it's going here, and overall, they're neck and neck. Minus Cinebench multi-threaded because, and Cinebench multi-threaded, eight cores will obviously win over six cores. And then, of course, the whole Ryzen setup chart that you've seen like 10,000 times now. Here's a picture of the Sazer Nerd K. And this is an example of one of the price cuts that AMD is doing. I'm sorry, AMD. Intel's doing. This CPU was originally a $1.2,000 MSRP, $2,000 MSRP, and now it's 999 It doesn't really make it much more affordable. It's not really helping Intel. Intel doesn't really do price cuts, and decreasing the prices of their chips by about 10 to 22% across the board won't exactly entice the consumer. Because if you're at least well versed in the CPU market, you're waiting for Ryzen to release fully, which comes out tomorrow, I might add, March 2nd. So you can see the performance, because I would not buy this. I would not. I don't think it's worth it. Not worth it. And then you go in here. 1800x and a pretty extreme voltage core. If you're trying to grill something on it, and they met someone managed to push a R7 1800x all the way up to 5.2 gigahertz, which is a, just an insane clock. And that's stuff you'd see on the highest end of cabulate consumer end. And then they're talking about how extra motherboards like the Asus Prime X370 and the the Crosshair 6 formula, if I believe it's called that. Crosshair 6, I'm very into that. Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3s won't be launched on March 2nd. They'll come out later, I assume it's second half, 2017. So, R7 is enthusiast, R5 is consumer, and R3 is budget. And pretty much competing with the i7, i5, and i3 in that order, respectively. Go in here, more information, and it's also talk about um, Intel releasing the 8th generation chip, so Coffee Lake, to combat Ryzen. So that'll be very interesting, having all this stuff releasing at the same time. And you go over here, 5.2 gigahertz, like I saw before. And overall, it seems very promising. Note that you're not going to reach 5.2 gigahertz on your 1800X on an air cooler, on a AIO water cooler, like an H115i or uh, a Kraken X62, you're not going to reach that. No way in Hades. This is most likely on LN2. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on LN2. Given the crazy voltage core here, that's an incredibly high voltage. And voltage is the death of the CPU because of the heat of the outputs. Only way you can run a CPU at this voltage is if you have extreme cooling to make sure the chip doesn't melt. Then, well, that's the roundup of it. We have the GTX 1080 Ti coming out. We have the Vega's name, which is, isn't very exciting. More implementation of AMD's CPUs and GPUs in future games. More talk about uh, benchmarks, rises and stuff. And then overclocking results of some extreme overclocker. Thank you for watching. I think this will be a very exciting week. And have a great day. Unless you don't want to have a great day. In which case, I, I, I probably can't help you. I'm sorry. Good to see my Photoshop has a life of its own now. When NVIDIA plows through all the results they've been sent, they're going to see this and say, What the hell is that? What is this? And when they cross-search it, there will be zero results online because I made it myself! Ha ha ha! Yeah. <laughs>